Math 2414, Taylor and McLaurin series, video 14, division of series. Well, I've already got this set up, but um, this is gonna be the last video. You can find a series for a function if you can write it as the quotient of two functions whose series you already know. The classic example is to find the McLaurin series for tangent of x by viewing it as sine x over cosine x, both of whose power series we know. Now you may be uh, wondering why I wrote the denominators as 6, 120, 5040, as opposed to their factorials, three factorial, five factorial, seven factorial, and the same thing with the denominators for in the series for cosine. That's because we're actually gonna be doing arithmetic with those numbers, so we kinda need to know what they are. And we're gonna find this series to three terms. So how do we do this? Well, in a couple of words, long division. I've already got the long division problem set up. The guy on the inside of the division house is the power series for sine of x. The guy on the outside is the power series for cosine of x. So let's just get to it like we would normally do long division. And if you haven't done a polynomial long division in a while and need a refresher, let me know. I'll hook you up with some college algebra videos I have. But assuming that you're somewhat familiar with it, start by looking at the leading terms and asking how many times is one going to x? or equivalently, what do you multiply by one to get x? And the answer is x. Then multiply that times all the terms of the divisor and write all the results underneath the uh, dividend. All right, so let's just take it one at a time. x times one is x, so we'll put that here. x times negative one half x squared is negative one half x cubed. x times positive 1 24th x to the fourth is positive 1 24th x to the fifth. And we may not need this one since we're only going to three terms, but x times negative 1 720, 1 720th x to the sixth is negative 1 720th x to the seventh. And then we subtract carefully. x minus x is zero, we were expecting that. On the x cubes, we have negative one sixth minus negative one half, which is negative one sixth plus one half, which is one third x cubed. In the x to the fifth column, we have one over 120 x to the fifth minus one over 24 x to the fifth. Uh, let's see, that'll be negative four over 120. So negative 1 30th x to the fifth. Let me double check that. 1 over 120 minus 1 over 24 times 5 will give us a common denominator. On the top, 1 minus 5 is negative 4 over 120. Yeah, negative 1 30th. If your fraction arithmetic goes slower, that's perfectly fine. But you should be able to do the fraction arithmetic. Uh, and we're still subtracting. This one I'm gonna write down. We have negative one over 5,040 minus negative, so plus one over 720. And this will be the coefficient of the x to the seventh. But remember that 720 came from six factorial and 5,040 came from seven factorial. So all I have to do to bring the six factorial to a seven factorial is hit it with some sevens. That will give us negative one plus seven on top, which is six, 5,040 on the bottom. And that's gonna give us something. <laughs> that's gonna give us something. What a very profound thing to say. I think it gives us 840 or one over 840. That would be correct. And it's positive. So plus one over 840. Okay, then we do it again. And once you, uh, Technically, you bring down the next term. So whatever is over here, we would bring down, but we're only focusing on the first three terms. So I really didn't even need this column over here, but it's there. All right, so what's our next move? Divide the leading term of the divisor, which is one, into the leading term of the current dividend, which is down here. Or equivalently, what do you multiply by one to get one third x cubed? And the answer, of course, is one third x cubed more specifically positive one third x cubed. And now let's do the distributing. 
times one is one third x cubed. One third x cubed times negative one half x squared is negative. One half times one third is one sixth. X squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. On the next term, uh, positive times positive is positive. One third times one over 24th is one over 72. X cubed times x to the fourth is x to the seventh. Then we subtract. And let's see what's left. The x cubes cancel. We have negative 1 30th minus negative 1 6th. Hit that with some fives and we end up with four over 30, which reduces to 2 15ths. So this is 2 15ths x to the fifth. And then in the last column, the x to the seventh column, we have one over 840 minus one over 72. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, my brain doesn't want to brain right now. 840, I know, bad thing to hear your calculus teacher saying. Oh, 72 does not go into 840. I actually have to find a common denominator. All right, give me a second to think about this. The 840 came from 5,040 divided by six. 5,040 was seven factorial. So this is seven factorial without the six, seven, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, 72, I can factor that easily. That's two times 36, which is two times 18 which is two times nine, which is three times three. All right, so our common denominator is gonna be a little bit annoying, uh, but we just basically have to give everybody what it's missing. Uh, the first fraction is missing a seven and a five. It's got plenty of twos for a four. It's got a three. It's got another two for the two, so those are all taken care of. So it's just missing a seven and a five. So times seven times five. Seven, six, five, four, three. Wait. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. It's missing more than that. All right, time to do this the uh, old school way. It's not really old school, it's how you do it. You factor every denominator completely. Seven, five, four is two times two, three, two, one. Don't need the ones. And then the other denominator is already factored. So let's just see what each one is missing. The second fraction is missing a seven and a five, which you already knew. Does it have everything else? Does it have three twos and a three? It does, okay, so it's good with twos and threes. The first fraction, however, is now missing, it's got the seven, the five, three twos, but it's missing a three, that's what it's missing. So the numerator is going to be three minus 75, excuse me, three minus 35, which is negative, um, 30, negative 32. And the denominator is going to be, whatever I get when I multiply all the factors out, it would just be 840 times three, which is 21, uh, 2400 plus 120, which is 2520. And I'm not even gonna mess with reducing that. More stuff over here. Why? Because I almost got what I want, which is the quotient to three terms. Because to figure out the third and final term, I just gotta ask how many times does one go into this? And that's easy. Positive 2 15ths x to the fifth. Thank goodness we only wanted the quotient to three terms. Is it messy? Yeah, is it manageable? Of course it is. Um, you will you see a lot of it on your homework and test? Not a lot, 